Coming up tonight on Sports Pause. The men's basketball team has had their best start since 1980. They take on St. Peter's and Mount St. Mary's. We'll see if they can continue that streak to 11 games. Women's hockey celebrated their seniors this weekend when they took on St. Lawrence and Clarkson, highlighted by Logan Andres and Nina Saigoff. And spring has sprung. The spring sports season is on the horizon here at Quinnipiac. We'll have the Q30B reporters in to preview what to expect from the spring sports. Sports Pause starts right now. Welcome to Sports Pause. I'm Ashley Potvin. And I'm Zach Jorenko. It's been another huge week in Quinnipiac Athletics and another huge week for the men's basketball team. The Bobcats took on St. Peter's on Thursday, a huge game between two of the top teams in the conference. Bobcats versus Peacons. Quinnipiac trying to win its 10th in a row and remain perfect at home in match play. A big game in Hamden, Connecticut. We go into the first half. The Bobcats pressuring the Peacocks, but St. Peter's escapes before Paul Otieno rejects Mohamed So at the rim, but the play is not over. As they dribble up the court, Savion Lewis is able to find Matt Vallanc in the corner and drills the transition three. See another dime for Savion Lewis as he finds Rahard Vavers for the three. And we see coming up some more defense for Paul Otieno as he gets up for another block as the Bobcats now head coast to coast and Savion Lewis is able to find a cutting Otieno and he goes up for the slam air Otieno. Big play there for the Bobcats player. Now coming out of the second half, the Peacocks storm back to cut the Bobcats lead in half. Lewis is able to find Balak off the inbound and Balak goes in with a work with some tough finish. As we see now, how about some deja vu as Lewis again to Balanc and Balanc goes up and draws the foul for the and one. I think you're seeing triple. No, you're not, as that was Balanc. Another one. Quinnipiac wins 84 to 73. Amari Tyson favors with 18 points. Bobcats guard Savion Lewis surpassed a major program record in the win. Q30's Keith Savage has more. Every great scorer needs someone to pass in the ball. And Savion Lewis is one of the best at in Quinnipiac history, and today he became the all-time single-season Division I assist record holder at Quinnipiac. In 2005, Rob Monroe finished the season with 170 assists, which was the Division I Quinnipiac record for 19 years. But on February 8, 2024, Lewis made sure he would be the new record holder, and he's on pace to shatter it with at least nine games remaining on the season. A Long Island native is currently second in assists per game in the country with seven and a half. And I think Savion Lewis could lead the country or be in the top three in assist this season? No. On December 5th, 2021, Lewis suffered a major knee injury that caused him to miss the rest of that season. The next year, he played 21 games on 13 minutes a night and was averaging a career low 2.8 assists. But now Lewis has become a full-time starter for his graduate year and specific reasons why this season has been so special for him. The options that we have, um, the patience and the experience that I have, I feel like um, I've slowed my game down a lot more, and um, I'm, I'm looking for my teammates, and they're doing a good job getting in my vision. Lewis has the single-season Division One assist record at Quinnipiac, but he does not have the all-time single-season assist record. When the Bobcats were Division Two in the 1992-93 season, Mike Buschetto had 211 assists that year. Lewis is on pace to break that record, and Buschetto is happy about it. I always feel good when people do better than me or, or succeed or... You know, there's no envy involved. It's it's good to see kids uh, putting something that they're passionate about into play, and then they get these results. Uh, it's good for other kids, and, and hopefully he holds it for 30 years. The two have already met because the Bobcats had a team dinner at Buscato's restaurant in Connecticut in November. He did tell me um, in the beginning of the year, prior to all the success we've been having, that he was uh, number one at Quinnipiac for assists. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to hear from him pretty soon. Busquero told me he would love to be in attendance if Lewis breaks his record, but we'll have to wait and see if that day comes. Report from Q30 Sports, I'm Keith Savage. The team then traveled to Mount St. Mary's in hopes of continuing their win streak. The Mount started off on an eight-point run in the first two minutes until Rehard Vavers hit a three to end their run. The largest lead of the first half was by 12 points by the Mount, but the Bobcats were able to cut the lead down to one going into halftime. The Bobcats had their first lead of the game 90 seconds into the second half, but their lead would only stick for five minutes before the Mount started to pull away. 
The Mount rolled to victory 96-79, snapping the Bobcats' 10-game win streak. After another week of play, here are the current men's basketball max standings. The Bobcats remain in sole possession of first place with a record of 11-2 in the conference. Fairfield sits at second, two games behind first with a record of 9-4. Maris and Niagara are tied for third with a record of 8-5. Iona St. Peter's and Mount St. Mary's all have seven wins, but it was Iona who sits in fifth with only five losses to their sixth. At the bottom are Ryder, Kanisha, Siena, and Manhattan with five, four, three, and two losses respectively. Women's ice hockey faced off against the seventh-ranked St. Lawrence Saints on Friday in a must-win game. With very little action in the first period, we're going to head straight into the second as Anna Sagetti receives a pass from Mae Batherson and she fires, but it's blocked by the Bobcats and gets a rebound and gets it past Logan Angers to put the Saints up one. Now later in the second period, I mean in the second, we see the Sagetti gets the puck down the blue line, brings it to Abley Hustler in the slot and she fires it home making it 2-0. Near the end of the second, Batherson collects the puck at the blue line. Hustler tips it in to the Saints up three. Now, let's head to the third. Switching up the camera angle as Mia Lapata fires the puck from the blue line and Nina Steigoff tips the puck into the net to put the Bobcats on the board. Later in the third, Julia Nearis finds Jess Shriver in the slot and she puts it home to bring the score three to two. In the last moments of the third, Captain Sadie Peer sends it to Caitlin LaMarche, whose shot is saved, but only for Peart to put it home and make it tied at three. This game couldn't be finished in three, so let's head to overtime. We see Hustler gain the puck after a turnover, and she brings the puck coast to coast and fires it to the top bin to win the game for St. Lawrence. The Bobcats fall to the Saints in overtime, four to three. Jess Shriver had one goal and two shots. Logan Andres had 31 saves in the game. After their overtime loss to St. Lawrence, the Bobcats look to bounce back against Clarkson. So we had this one, Clarkson playing Quinnipiac, big ECAC game, looking to bounce back after that overtime loss to St. Lawrence. They want to get off with some action. As we head into the first, we see Alexa Hoskin with a near side pass to Maya Labad. She fires it, but Michelle Pasechnik makes a great save, and UU wins another shot, Pasechnik, with that save. We see Kayla LaMarche now. She receives the puck, she fires it, Pasechnik makes another save and stops through traffic. Later in the first, Gosling receives a pass from Dominic Petrie, and that shot is a good save by Angers to keep this one scoreless. Into the second, we see Ann Tricouncy send a pass to Haley Wynn, who fires it right over the shoulder of Logan Angers to put Clarkson up one. We see now a couple minutes later, Sadie Peer collects the puck, and she finds the Marsh on the near side, who gets it past Pasechnik for the goal, tying the game up at one. Into the third. We see Alexa Hoskin collecting the, the puck at the point. She fires it on net. There's a huge scramble in front. Bodies for both teams flying in front, but Pasechnik stands strong in front of the net. She had a great performance. Later on in the third, Nina Steigoff steals the puck in the neutral zone. She fires it, and Pasechnik yet again with that save. We've heard her name so much throughout this one. This one would head to overtime as Gosling receives the pass from behind the net. It gets deflected by Maya Laban, and Clarkson is able to seal the game in their favor. 2-1 to one win for Clarkson over Quinnipiac. Two overtime losses on the weekend. Saturday's game against Clarkson marked a special senior day for the program. Q30's Anthony Rossi has more. Well, super proud. Super proud of Sophie for sure. I mean, she just grinds it out all the time, so just really glad for her to finally get a goal. We love Quinnipiac and just love being able to watch her play. Kendall Cooper, Maddie Samuskevich, Kate Villeneuve, Sophie Urban, Nina Steigoff, Kate Riley, Alexa Hoskin, Jess Shriver, Julia Neeris, Sadie Peart, and of course, in the backstop, Logan Angers. These 11 women have done wonders for the Quinnipiac women's ice hockey team in the 2023-24 winter season. But senior leadership can only go so far as these 11 players will be graduating at the end of the season. You know, it, it's all about culture, and they are phenomenal people. You know, it's 11 players. You see them all out there, and you can look to so many points of impact that they've had on our program, and, and that's what it's all about for us is continuing to, to live our life in the right way, that we are going to keep getting better, that we're great people, that we're giving to, to one another, allowing one another, one another to have amazing experiences here at Quinnipiac. They've all worked hard to get where they're at and um, very proud. They love this place. Both Maddie and um, Melissa 
they wouldn't have gone anywhere else. It's funny because she had just mentioned to Maddie, she's like one of our family, you know, like she's known us for how many years. She recruited Melissa way back when, um, when Melissa was in Shattuck, and we've known her since then, so we're happy. Just because players are line mates on the ice doesn't mean that they're not friends off the ice. Mr. Hoskin believes Alexa has found two great ones in Maya and Sadie. Yeah, so Sadie and Alexa have been roommates since day one, and uh, great connection. And then Maya came along uh, a couple last year, and played on their line, and uh, their parents are fantastic. We get along with them a lot, and we always have a couple of drinks and food every every time we get up here and have. have, uh, have a While the Bobcats will not clinch a top four seed, they will have another home game for the rest of the year, where they will host one ECAC hockey playoff game against the number 11 or number 16 seed, clinching the number five or six seed. Reporting from M&T Bank Arena, I'm Anthony Rossi, Q30 Sports. After two losses on the weekend, let's see how the Bobcats have fared in the ECAC standings. Quinnipiac stays put in fifth place with an 11-9 record in ECAC play. Yale is gaining ground on the Bobcats after posting shutouts against Dartmouth and Harvard over the weekend. St. Lawrence lands in third and Cornell in fourth after both teams clinched first round buys in the playoffs with wins over the weekend. Brown clinched home ice for the first time since 2006 after defeating Harvard on Friday and Dartmouth, RPI, Union and Harvard finish out the bottom four in the standings. A weekend of hockey action means a new women's hockey USCHO poll. Quinnipiac stayed locked in ninth place in the poll and there was very little movement in the rest of the rankings. Ohio State, Wisconsin and Clarkson repeated as 1, 2 and 3 respectively in the poll. Other ECAC opponents remain in their spots with Colgate in 4th, Cornell at 6th and St. Lawrence at 7th. The only movement seen in the poll was the Yale Bulldogs who moved into 14th place after being previously unranked. We have to take a break here on Sports Pause, but when we return, Rand Pecknold's squad hit the road for two games upstate against St. Lawrence and Clarkson, and we'll see if they can put a couple in the win column. And the women's basketball team went on a road trip of their own, looking to gain some ground in the MAC against St. Peter's and Siena. We'll be back right after this. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. He's here, he's here! Wait, wait, wait! What? I can't drive. Why? Why? My... Oh. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. I need a job. I need a new career. Well, I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. I wasn't happy with what I was doing. After high school, I didn't have a plan. I just wanted to start working. I got laid off twice. But you gotta keep going. You just need the right skills. Find an apprenticeship. I found a two-year IT program. I found a medical course online. I'm now a consultant in the tech space. You have more options than you think. You can do this. You will find something. You will find something new. Welcome back on Sports Pods. On Friday, men's ice hockey traveled to upstate New York to take on St. Lawrence. And it was the Saints who came away with it pulling off a 3-1 upset. The first two periods saw only one goal from St. Lawrence's Josh Boyer before Travis Trelor scored Quinnipiac's only goal early in the third period to tie the game. The Saints took charge right after as defenseman Felipe Chaplau scored two goals in two minutes to secure the win for St. Lawrence. Ben Cross also had a big performance in net for the Saints, making 41 stops in the win. The Bobcats look to bounce back the next day with a top four ECAC matchup at Clarkson. 
an action-packed first two periods helped Quinnipiac hold off Clarkson 4-2. Four different Bobcats got into the score sheet during the game, with Anthony Cipollone and Alex Power tallying goals early in the first period to keep the score level. Charles Alexi Legault and Colin Graff then scored within one minute of each other late in the second period, doubling the Bobcats' lead. Mason Marcells also added two assists in the win. After splitting games over the weekend, let's see where the Bobcats lie in the ECAC standings. Quinnipiac remains at the number one spot in the standings, followed by Cornell in the second spot, who won both of their matchups over the weekend. Colgate lands at three after a shootout win over RPI. Clarkson is in the fourth spot with St. Lawrence, Yale, and Brown right behind, filling out the middle of the pack. Dartmouth, Harvard, RPI, and Princeton round out the last four spots in the ECAC. Let's take a look at the new men's USCHL poll and see where Quinnipiac stands. The Bobcats have the biggest drop from the five spot, tumbling down to number nine. The top four remain the same with Boston College, North Dakota, Boston University, and Wisconsin in that order. Denver jumps up one spot to number five, and Michigan State moves from nine up to the sixth spot. Michigan dropped three spots from 11 to 14, and ECAC opponent Cornell moved up one spot from 13 to 12. The women's basketball team traveled to St. Peter's on Thursday in hopes of extending their win streak to three. The Bobcats and Peacocks battled in this one. There were eight lead changes and three tied scores in the match. The largest lead of the game was 12 points by the Bobcats, which came at the end of the fourth quarter. Quinnipiac pulled away late as Anna Foley and Carson Martin each scored 10 points in the 46-40 win against the Peacocks. The game marked the second lowest scoring game in the MAC this season. Two days later, the team traveled to New York to take on the Siena Saints. Unlike their last game, this wasn't a back-and-forth matchup, and Siena was in control for the entirety of the game. Although Anna Foley scored 17 points and first-year Cassidy Thompson scored a career-high eight, it wouldn't be enough to secure the victory for Siena shot almost 50% from the field all game, crushing the Bobcats 74 to 55. Siena handed the Bobcats their first loss since the end of January, sweeping Quinnipiac this season. A women's basketball player was named to another award this week. Another week, another award for Anna Foley. Foley was named MAC Rookie of the Week for the second week in a row for her play against St. Peter's and Siena. She recorded 27 points, 10 rebounds, 7 assists, and 2 blocks across both games. Foley went 40% from the field and 75% from the free throw line. She has 269 points throughout her first year so far and is averaging over 12 points a game. After another week of play, here are the current women's MAC basketball standings. Quinnipiac sits in the middle of the pack with a record of 7-6, tied with Canisius for 5th place in the conference. Fairfield remains with first with an undefeated conference record behind them is Siena with a record of 10-3. And, and Niagara sits in 3rd with 9, nine wins and 4 losses in the conference. Manhattan is in 4th place with an 8-5 record looking at the bottom. Mount St. Mary's takes 7th at 6-7. Women's track and field traveled down the street to Yale University for the second meet of the season. Now this is going to be the Battle of Whitney Ave again, but instead of the ice, we're going to take it to the track. The Quinnipiac indoor track and field team traveled to New Haven in the 17th annual Geek and Geek Invitational to wrap up their regular season. Starting in the field is sophomore pole vaulter Erin Brennan as she tries to clear the three and a half beam and she does just that. A few attempts later, Brennan is looking to break the school record again by clearing a 3.65 foot pole, but she will just miss. Brennan finished sixth in the event. Running to the track, we start with a 3,000 meter run, and Liv Stefano in the sixth lap of the race, takes the lead over Princeton and Yale. And she will not look back as she blows the competition out of the water, winning the race with a final time of nine minutes and 55 seconds as we see her striding towards the finish line right now. And the biggest race of the day for the Bobcats was the 60 meter dash, as Nyasha Daly looks to improve her time in the MAC. As we see her warming up here, she'll get set on the blocks and get off right away. She drops three hundredths of a second off her time to get a time of 7.58 in the 60 meter. Now moving on to the one mile, it's Rachel St. Germain as the Bobcats flex their distant muscles. She dominated this race from start to finish with a strong seed time for the max finish in the race and Ali Zafina finished second in the race. They will now focus to 
on the MAC championships in New York next week. The spring season is starting up and the Q30 beat reporters have more on the teams and their upcoming seasons. The acrobatics and tumbling team has returned to the mats for another season and before the season kicked off, they were ranked number three behind Oregon and Baylor. Now they kicked off their season last Saturday in a away win against Morgan State and one athlete to look out for is Farrah Chernoff who won the individual title for aerial tumbling last season during the championships. Now let's spring over to the softball field to hear from softball beat reporter James Plano. Thanks Brianna. Quinnipiac softball kicks off their season down in Texas. One hitter to look out for is sophomore center fielder Mary Fogg, who batted 381 last year and going to be hitting out of the leadoff spot. Going to be massive for this Bobcats offense. And one pitcher to look out for, the ace, of course, Sidney Horan. Going to be huge for this Bobcats defense, especially to take games against top teams like Marist and Canisius. The Bobcats will continue to compete in in-season tournaments and away games until this April when they return here to Hamden for their home opener. That's all for me. Off to Ben Kane at the lacrosse field. Thanks, Ben. The Bobcats have a brand new turf baseball field here in Hamden for the 2024 campaign. But it's not all positives as key players like Kevin Sider and Anthony D'Onofrio depart. Sean Swenson and Jared Zimbardo return. It should be a fun season for the Bobcats on the diamond as they start their season this weekend against Liberty. They'll be home March 1st to try out this new field for game action. That's coming up. Men's lacrosse takes on St. John's as Mason Foley's squad looking for their first win of the season. And then we've got the best plays of the week. Will it be a basketball dunk, a hockey goal, or will it be from the lacrosse game? We'll find out on Top Plays. Meet the scan. A simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early. but I feel fine. That's great, but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer. Oh man, that's a new fence. If you smoke, early detection could save your life. Learn more at Saved by the... Honey, what I think you need is a socket wrench. I played JV basketball. I'm sorry, I don't think it looks right. This is good, and it's all is good, it, baby. Is it really all good? If you love me enough to routinely test your handyman skills, not to mention the strength of your marriage, then of course you'll visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat to make sure I'm in the right car seat. I'm gonna call my dad. Hmm, maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made home ownership happen. Homeschooling yourself on loans, beefing up your credit score. So I'm pre-approved. You were like, yes! Sorry. Color coding listings, ticking boxes, and flushing every toilet in a 20-mile radius. Home sweet home. You aced house hunting. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. I know what you're thinking. I need a job. I need a new career. Well, I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. I wasn't happy with what I was doing. After high school, I didn't have a plan. I just wanted to start working. I got laid off twice. But you got to keep going. You just need the right skills. Find an apprenticeship. I found a two-year IT program. I found a medical course online. I'm now a consultant in the tech space. You have more options than you think. You can do this. You will find something. You will find something new. Welcome back to Sports Paws. A women's soccer player was announced as being signed to a professional team this morning. Graduate student Kayla Mangacho signed her first professional contract in Lock for Lay Verdense. As a Bobcat, she has scored five goals and contributed eight assists to help lead the team in back-to-back -back conference championships and back-to-back -back trips to the NCAA tournament. This past season, she was named one of the three defensive players of the year. Mangachos was also named to the 2023 New England Women's Intercollegiate Soccer Association All-New England second team.
The acrobatics and tumbling team had their first meet of the season against Morgan State University this past Saturday. In the compulsory round, the Bobcats put up a score of 38 points, nearly five points higher than Morgan State's. This event was highlighted by the toss heat, which earned the Bobcats a 9.95. Quinnipiac continued the momentum in the acro event where they scored the 27.8, extending their lead by over 10 points. Senior Tiffany Zeba competed in the six element open pass tumbling event, which scored a 9.725. This was the highest of the 12 passes in the event. Quinnipiac won this match 262.58 to Morgan State's 220.770. Softball started their season this past weekend with a two-game tournament in Commerce, Texas. In their first game against UMass Lowell, nine different Bobcats scored runs. Sophomore Mary Fogg contributed two runs and two RBIs. The final score of this match was 10-4, giving the Bobcats the first win of the season. The game against Texas A&M Commerce came later in the day. The two Bobcats only had two runs in this game, which was not enough time to give, which was not enough to give them a win against the Lions. The runs scored were from Fogg and sophomore Natalia Apatiga. Men's lacrosse also opened up their season this past weekend against St. John's University. The Bobcats struck first with two goals in the first quarter to the Red Storms one. Ten goals were scored in the second, with Quinnipiac scoring six and St. John's scoring four. Fifteen more goals were scored by the team in the second half of play. But it were the Bobcats that came out victorious with a score of 17-11. to 11. Senior Dylan Donnery contributed five goals to the Bobcats' victory, and se Senior Ryan Donnery scored three goals and made three assists. Mason Oak was awarded Defensive Player of the Week after making 19 saves. Heading to the courts, the Bobcats took on the Bryant Bulldogs in men's tennis action. Quinnipiac fell 5-2 to Bryant, scoring their two points in singles victories. Both Daniel Vilek and Finn Burge won their singles match, as Vilek won in three sets and Burge in straight sets, giving Burge his second singles match victory in a row. All three doubles teams lost to Bryant by a score of 6-3. The Bobcats will return to action on Sunday as they travel to New Jersey to face Monmouth. Women and Girls in Sports Day occurred on February 7th this year, and the women's ice hockey team honored this at their game on Friday. February 7th was National Girls and Women in Sports Day, and the women's ice hockey team honored the day during the game against St. Lawrence on Friday night. I think it's, it's so important. You know, I think for our team, they find as many opportunities as they can to, to interact with young girls, and, and that is just invaluable. I think the mentorship opportunities, the, the chance for young girls to see what they put into their sport, what they put into their academics, Without a doubt, they're role models, and, and we're really proud of how they approach it. Recently, the development of the Professional Women's Hockey League has taken the game of hockey by storm. Yeah, I mean, it's you look at the PWHL games and all the young girls that are there and at those games, it's only going to grow the game. We need more young girls playing in order for the game to get better. And I think that that's going to be the best part about all of this, is that pool is going to continue to get bigger, which is going to improve the skill level and improve the depth, and our game will keep, keep growing. Senior day is now the focus for the Bobcats as they take on the Clarkson Golden Knights this Saturday. For Q30 Sports, I'm Katie Velukovic. Well, Zach, it's time for my favorite time of the night. No way, it's my favorite time of the night as well. Top five plays start right now. Play number five is on the mats this week with acrobatics and tumbling senior Tiffany Zebo with a gorgeous sequence in the six heat tumbling pass. Bobcats win their first meet of the season of 2024. Play number four onto the ice now, Anthony Cipollone from the blue line snipes it home. Another look, he rattled that one home from range, Ashley, what a shot. And we'll stay on the ice for play three. Julia Neeris slides a slick pass to Jess Shriver and she pots that puck with ease to make it a one goal game. The Bobcats would drop this in overtime 4-3. to three. Play number two, how about some hoops? Matt Belanc on the drive gets a gorgeous finish way high off the glass and one. He makes this look way too easy. Now same, gay, same game, first half for play one. Savion Lewis feeds Paulo Tieno and he drops the hammer on Mohamed So. One more look, that is poster material, Zach. What? And that wraps up another episode of Sports Pause. Thank you guys for watching and to the producers and everyone working behind the scenes. Be sure to follow us on social media and Q30 Sports and visit us online at Q30TV.com. For Ashley Potvin, I'm Zach Tarenko. Enjoy the, enjoy the snow, Bobcats.